folks, welcome into that betting show for May 3rd, 2019, your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. It is Friday, and he's Teddy Savranson. Give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour at Right Side VP. Hot topics of the day. Sixers dominate yesterday versus the Raptors to take a two-to-one series lead. NBA doubleheader on deck, but Teddy. The more interesting stuff. Remember a whole taboo about, hey, we can't have any gambling states host any of these major tournaments. Something's going to be up with it. Well, as we see today, NCA rescinds the ban on title events and betting states. Hello, Final Four Las Vegas. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, as someone who's seen, like, if you remember, <laughs> 15 years, it wasn't like 100 years ago. It's since I've been in Vegas. I mean, the NCAA was suing Vegas. Uh, there was uh, bills to ban college sports betting uh, that the NCAA, uh, they brought all the coaches. Remember Dean Smith testifying on Capitol Hill? Huh? The new world now. Bye-bye, all of that garbage. Hello, Final Four in Vegas. This is awesome, and it speaks volumes about the hypocrisy that used to exist that doesn't exist anymore. Thank you, Supreme Court. Thank you for legalizing sports betting. So the other 49 states get to have the much, as much fun as we've had in Vegas <laughs> for the last 50 years. Yep, what a destination. NFL draft coming, obviously, next year. The Final Four will be there as well, as well as we can probably think the college football playoff will be centered in Las Vegas in a short amount of time. Also, let's start on the NBA hardcourt last night, Teddy, and interesting. Hey, we talked about it. The line flipped in this one. Raptors open up plus one and a half, shift to minus one and a half by game time. The Sixers took it to the Toronto Raptors last night. Joel Embiid was fantastic. Outside of Kawhi and Siakam, not so much going on on the Raptors side. I thought Nick Nurse would have a good game plan coming into three. They're really going to have to regroup because game four on Sunday, you can't go down three to one. Well, you can go down three to one if you're not expecting sure. to win the series. But even down three to one, it's not hopeless for Toronto. They get two of the final three at home if they lose game four on Sunday. So the one they got to steal, game six back in Philly. I know the Raptors are going to do that, but I'm saying that if, for all the must win, the must win is when you have three losses already. <laughs> and Toronto only has two so far, but it feels like they're going to have three. What do we say on yesterday's show? We say if you blindly bet against line moves, a three-point line move that's not injury-related in an NBA playoff game, you're likely to make money. Well, <laughs> that was Philly last night. And what do we say? The guy I'm pointing my finger at continues to be Kyle Lowry. You know, when Kyle Lowry was Badly outplayed again last night. This isn't the first postseason that Kyle Lowry's been badly outplayed. And when Van Vliet's not getting the job off the bench and Lowry's not getting the job at the point, guess what? Toronto's not winning games. Last night, not even close for Raptor backers. We take a look at game four heading up on Sunday in uh, Philadelphia at the Wells Fargo Center. You know, you got to take the numbers are not emotional. A lot of these Las Vegas offshore books put out. The numbers are the numbers, as we like to say. And we took a look at a game where the Sixers thoroughly dominated from start to finish, Teddy. Then on Sunday, we look and say, wait a second. The Raptors once again are favored by one. We saw the same exact thing in the Celtics and the uh, Milwaukee Bucks series. First game, seven and a half, eight points. Celtics went easy. They hang the same number. People running to the window. Oh, my goodness. The Celtics should destroy him again. This is free money. So just take a second here, Teddy, to talk about when these numbers come out. They're there for a reason. It's not because we just watched a game where this team was really good, so we're going to make the Sixers minus six and a half in this next game. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I mean, look, the, the point spreads are based on mathematical models. Okay, point spread. The point spread for game four is already set before game three is in the books. Then they'll adjust. They'll tweak slightly. But you're never going to see a dramatic difference from one game to the next. The markets might push the, the money one way or the other and might create a big line move. But when you're talking about openers, when you're talking about where the books are going to post these numbers, these two teams have the power ratings, Team A, Team B, whatever series we're talking about. And the point spreads are going to be based off of those power ratings, and those power ratings aren't going to change a whole lot over the course of a four or a five or a six or even a seven-game series. Hence. What you saw in the first game, saw something pretty close in the second game. What you're going to see in game three, you're going to see pretty close again in game four, uh, obviously based on the home courts. Nice NBA doubleheader coming up a little bit later in the show here as we talk with Watch What You Bet. But we're going to talk a little bit of baseball, a little bit of history here, Teddy. Four on the mound yesterday. Syndergaard, sensational. Complete game shutout, 10 strikeouts, and oh, yeah. The Mets did score one run, and it was off the bat of Noah Syndergaard with a home run. First time, Teddy, since 1983 that this happened. And coincidentally, it happened also against the Reds. Not a lot of offense in the series for the New York Mets or the Cincinnati Reds here, but an interesting and dominant performance by Thor. 
Well, I mean, clearly it's a problem for Cincinnati. I mean, it happened in 1983 and then it happened in 2019. That's the only <laughs> two times it's happened. So uh, it's a Reds issue. Yes, I'm joking. Syndergaard, let's give him credit. That's impressive. I never did that. You ever done that? You know? Uh, uh, no. Pitch uh-uh. shut out and hit the only uh, hit a home run for the only run of the game. <laughs> That's pretty cool. They don't call him Thor for nothing. And as you mentioned, back-to-back one nothing games for the Mets and the Reds. Offense, not as easy to find at City Field over the course of the last couple of days. Teddy, 145th Kentucky Derby is going to take place on Saturday. And what do we do here at SportsbookReview.com? We're going to take good care of you here. Do you have a special promo coming up? Triple Crown. Sign up at Bovada and get a $20 deposit bonus as long as you use the code BOVKD20. Nice, easy. Everybody's going to be betting tomorrow. Do yourself a favor. Check in with Bovada. Get the free 20 bucks. A complete loaded page just for the Kentucky Derby right here from SportsbookReview.com, Teddy. Yeah, so I mean, it's certainly the type of opportunity. If you want to bet the Derby, take advantage of it. What, free 20 bucks? Can't go wrong with that. Uh, what's that promo code again, Donnie? You got it right in front of you. Promo code BOV, as in Bovada, KD, as in Kentucky Derby, and 20. Very simple. Punch it in. We'll be ready to go. The favorite, Teddy. Omaha Beach scratch from the race. But here, here, sport, the uh, Westgate Sportsbook has opened the uh, new uh, favorites, as I should say. Is uh, what do we got here? Game winner nine to two, Roadster nine to two, improbable maximum security tactic is all at six to one. But let's keep this in here, Teddy. The one thing that always gives some people some problems in any sport that you have when the rains and the weather come in, you might be able to find some value here. And of course, we've seen derbies run in the rain each of the last two years. The reports I'm hearing say this track's the worst of the bunch. It's supposed to rain all day Friday, it's supposed to rain all day Saturday. It's not going to be pretty. So when you're doing your handicapping for the race, make sure you find a mutter. And, of course, Omaha Beach was the best mutter of the bunch, supposedly. The chalk, he scratched. The one horse that I keep hearing about is improbable. And, again, I know nothing about horse racing, but I do know people that do know something about horse racing. An improbable, a Baffert horse at 6-1 to one is one that I've been hearing bounced around town a fair bit over the last couple of days. You may want to take a shot with him. As for long shots, you know, when you have a field like this, where there's a bunch of favorites, but no clear favorite. The one clear favorite's out of the race. It's going to be nasty conditions. Maybe take a shot with a long shot. The two that I've been recommended, number 13, Code of Honor, number 14, Win, Win, Win. That's a pretty good name for a horse if he's going to place or show. Even better if he's going to win. Yeah, should be some fun here. We'll keep track of that and all that much more over the weekend here right at sportsbookreview.com. As we said with the uh, Bovada code, B-O-V-K-D-20. Check in with SBRodds.com all weekend long for everything. Teddy, look, we say it's hard to cap, obviously, the Kentucky Derby. But I do feel bad sometimes with the pundits out there and the cappers that get after NHL hockey because I would just pull my hair out at this point. Every single game seems like it comes down to a pivotal point. The winner does this. There's no momentum. Your best momentum the next day is the goalie. Both games last night, the Bruins and the Avalanche, both even their series up at two. Bruins win on the road in Columbus 4-1 to and head back to Boston. The Avalanche shut out the Sharks 3 nothing and head back to San Jose. It just seems like hockey, Teddy, just always destined for game sevens, isn't it? There's a whole lot of them, uh, more in hockey than in any other sport. And wouldn't be surprised if we see a few a few more in this year's postseason. There's a randomness to hockey when it comes to how hot the goalie is and what shots get in. And it's not, you know, how many shots you get on goal. It's not how will you play for the game. It's how good did your goalie do <laughs> at uh, stopping a couple of point blank shots? Or did you hit the post on this one or that one? I've never been a huge hockey better. I know guys that do very well betting hockey, but it's not one that's ever been in my wheelhouse. Worth noting, if you've been betting on the underdogs in the postseason, they have a winning straight up record, let alone the plus, plus prices attached to those underdogs. Not a bad betting strategy moving forward, even if you haven't been able to take advantage of it thus far in the NHL playoffs. Overnight line movers, and usually we pick games that have a decided line moving advantage here. Well, we do have a little bit of movement here between Gaussman and Urania. Uh, Taking a look at SBRodds.com now, sitting at around 159, 160, depending on where you're shopping at. The reason I brought this up, Teddy, because I also want to pick your brain on this as well. Urania is going to face the Braves for the first time since hitting Acuna last year in August. I actually watched the Braves telecast yesterday, the home broadcast, and in the seventh and eighth inning, when they throw it back to the studio. Both analysts were saying there's going to be fireworks tomorrow. You have to get payback. You have to throw one right at, you know, Urania's ribs, and you have to make restitution as opposed, as we like to say. 
But interesting because we're gamblers, and if you're putting your money down on this game, you know before the game they're probably going to warn both benches saying this is not going to get out of hand, and if somebody's going to throw at somebody, they're immediately ejected. So case in point today, if you're going to go in and bet on Gaussman, is it up to him to drill him if he gets up in the second inning or the third inning, or do you drill the very first batter that you see to try to get some you know, payback in this? Been, for, you know, the game's 142, total of eight in that range, but does this cloud your mind as a gambler today? Like, whoa, I'm just going to stay away from this one. Yeah. I mean, in, in 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 a short word, I can only take Atlanta in today's game, and I don't want to lay this price with Atlanta because a decent chance that Gaussman's going to get tossed out of this game because he has to throw at somebody. He has to. That's the unwritten rules of baseball. And um, when you read the quote from Brian Snitker, you know, I think it was pretty out talking about what happened last year. And again, what happened last year, Acuna had opened up each of the previous three games with a leadoff homer. And then the first pitch of the game, Urania just drilled him. 97 and a half mile an hour fastball. And boom, there was, you know, brawl and all of that. Um, you know, the quote from Urania, I missed my spot inside in the corner where I wanted to start with them. I tried to pitch inside and move him. It was a bad pitch. Snitker, I think it was pretty evident what I thought. That's a damn shame. Acuna's just playing the game. So uh, one would think there will be some retribution here. Although... The money for Atlanta could have everything to do with Josh Donaldson and nothing to do with this <laughs> matchup. Donaldson missed the last three games with a right calf injury. Looks like he's going to be back in the lineup today for the Braves coming off that ugly blowout loss to the Padres yesterday. And also, Ted, as we like to say with Miami, Caleb Smith's on the mound. Yeah, I'm probably going to take a pass until he gets back on the mound within his fifth day start. Taking a look at the Kershaw Dodgers tonight. Overpriced at the opener, maybe a little bit, Teddy. Looking at SBRodds.com right now. Open up at 172, 185 is high offshore. Now sitting around that 150, 155 range, as high as 160 in some outlets. Total of seven and a half. Kershaw versus Lauer, NL West battle. And the money pouring in against Kershaw, which is not something we see uh, all the time. This, in my mind, is the two factors why the money's coming in. One, make no mistake about it. This is the biggest series in San Diego since, I don't know, 2010. That's the last time they had a winning record. Um, Pottery's only a game and a half out of first place. It's May. Stadium's sold out. It's a big deal in San Diego this weekend uh, against L.A. The other factor, of course, is Lauer, who went 3-0 and with an 0.92 ERA, and he only gave up one uh, base runner per inning, a 203 on base percentage, and three starts against the Dodgers last year. Again, a former first-rounder, a guy who gave up only two hits over 5.2 innings in his last start. Markets are saying Lauer may be a bet-on guy today in a huge series for the Padres. Teddy Gambler's trying to turn the clocks back here on the Red Sox and Chris Sale because they're loading up on him again today. Offshore markets opened up at minus 60, minus 170, now sitting as high as 185 and 190 at some outlets today. It's going to be versus the Red Sox. If you saw last night, devastating loss once again for those Red Sox, losing in walk-off fashion to the White Sox in Chicago. Total of eight and a half. Sale versus Lopez. On paper, this is a mismatch, but can we get the old Chris Sale here, Teddy? Uh, I'm not like, a, what did we say yesterday? I ain't laying $2 for the Red Sox. Yep. I ain't laying $2 for the Red Sox today either. You know, the Red Sox are 0 6 with Sale on the Hill. He pitched better last time out, no question. You know, still gave up four runs, uh, but he lasted seven innings for the first time this season. He had eight strikeouts. The walks were a problem. Here's the quote from Chris Sale. The markets like this quote I'm sitting here like a broken record. What am I, six starts in? I've sucked every bit of every last one of them. I don't want to sit here and say the same things over and over, but hopefully sooner rather than later, that's for damn sure. Like I said, this is a result-oriented game. No one cares about the hard work. No one cares about the effort. We got to start winning games. <laughs> that's $2 price tag. Markets like it. Red Sox aren't a $2 favorite on the road to anybody right now, in this better's opinion. Yeah, I appreciate Chris Sale. I mean, I, look, I've always liked him as a pitcher there, but I do appreciate the guys that when they're down in the dumps make no excuses and come out and say, hey, Buck stops with me right here. We'll see if they can get it back underway tonight with the uh, Red Sox. Watch what you bet here, Teddy. Double header tonight in the NBA. Good one. Bucks and the Celtics get it going in the Garden. Celtics favored by minus two, total of 219. Money line split plus 119, minus 139. Eight o'clock tonight, they're going to tip off. And the Bucks, every time we bring them up here on that betting show, Teddy, you look at their against the spread numbers on the season. Very impressive. 52 and 33 against the number on the season. Seven and three against the spread as a dog. And 10. Hey, look, talking about partying, going out. It's payday on Fridays, Teddy. 10 and 4 against the spread on Friday nights. The Celtics 43 and 43 against the number on the season. Yeah, and I went back and looked at those uh, games where the Bucks were dogs. That 7 and 3 ATS. 
And even that comes with an asterisk. One of the three losses came in the regular season finale where uh, uh, they uh, they were resting everybody. Another of the losses came in another game where multiple starters missing. So really, we're talking about a healthy Bucks team. Had one loss all season, ATS, as an underdog. Pretty darn good in that role. All that being said, we got the Celtics off a bad loss coming home. Kyrie Irving, quote, this is what I signed up for. This is what Boston traded for me for, being able to go back in the trenches, get ready for another battle. You know, this is what you live for. Basketball is fun when it comes like this, when you have to respond. This is the type of basketball you want to be playing this time of the year. That's bet on quote. I like that quote. You know, that's saying, hey, we're ready. You know, <laughs> um, now, obviously, we talk about the adjustments that were made between game one and game two. Kyrie, non-factor in game two. Uh, we saw a very different look for Milwaukee. You put a Miritich in the starting lineup in place of Sterling Brown. And the Celtics attacked him. You know, Jalen Brown early on uh, got going. But, <laughs> you know, uh, Miritich made the shots and he played physical. Uh, uh, Budenholzer, quote, I thought Nico was great. I thought he had a little bit of energy and effort, a little physicality. His defense is what stood out to me for a guy that's not known for playing defense. Of course, the Bucks hit 23 pointers. In game two, that's going to be hard pressed to repeat this time around. Boston ranked among the top quartile in the NBA in defending beyond the arc during the regular season. And uh, a couple of home games in the first round held Indiana just 31% three point shooting. It's a tough game for me. It really is. I do like the spot for Boston. I don't know if I like laying points with Boston against Milwaukee, though. I did not get involved with game three tonight. Yeah, it's be interesting tonight, too, because you get that hometown crowd kick that you got last night in Philadelphia. Both of these in the Eastern Conference said he seemed destined to go long. I mean, at least six games, probably seven in both of them. We'll see if we can have some fun. Trailblazers on the home court tonight versus the Nuggets, fresh off their Game 2 victory, now flipping it back home to the Moda Center in Portland. 10-30 tonight. So you get that nice spread-out doubleheader here. Trailblazers favored by four. Total of 215.5. Money line split plus 160. Minus 180. The Nuggets, 46-45 and 45 against the number on the season. 12-15 and 15 against the number as a dog. And 18-20. and 26 against the number on the road. Trailblazers at home, Teddy, 49 and 40 on the season, 21 and 17 against the spread as a home favorite tonight, 10 30. Well, those Trailblazers could take that lead here. It'd be nice. Yeah. That being said, Denver won their must win road game at San Antonio in the mm -hmm. first round, despite their season long, I'm not going to say struggles. They weren't great on the road, they weren't awful. Uh, you know, that's how they finished with the number two seed in the West, a dominant home record and a decent uh, road record. They weren't a bad road team. That being said, we talked about it going into Wednesday's game. Is this the spot for the Nuggets to exhale? Coming off the game seven, coming off the game one. Again, a short turnaround for game two. That's exactly what they did. You saw it in the first half. You know, they shot 51% from the field in game one, 41% from the on the arc game two. That's under 35% from the floor, 20% from three point range. They can even hit free throws. 65, 61% from the line. You know, Mike Malone, quote, we could make a damn shot. You know, Gary Harris, quote, those are great shots that we want to get. We just didn't knock them down. But we have a next play mentality. We just have to keep shooting them, and those are going to fall next game. We just have to be better. We have to come out more physical, be ready to play in Portland, and those shots will fall. Malone kind of ripped his guys a little bit. If you're not making shots, maybe attack the basket. Maybe get to the rim. Maybe get to the foul line. We're getting such open look that I understand our players shooting the shots. When you're not having a night where you make shots consistently, you have to attack instead of settle. All that's true. That All that being said, you know, uh, Denver had a great edge on the offensive glass in game two. That's an edge they may well have again tonight. One would think they're going to shoot a little bit better tonight than they did. All that being said, you know, it's a Blazers team that got the win and cover on the road despite Damian Lillard not really doing a whole lot. And Denver's not healthy. Jamal Murray dealing with a thigh injury. He's expected to play. We'll have to see if he's anywhere close to being 100%. Yep, NBA games tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 10.30 Eastern time. But, Teddy, what a weekend that's setting up right now. You want to talk about setting the stage, NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball, NHL, the Derby. Don't forget also, Teddy, which I know a lot of people haven't, 
May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Oh, yeah, Major League Baseball in Mexico this weekend. So if you are capping that game and you see the asterisk, it's not because of, hey, well, home renovations. No, 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 no. It's a neutral site game. Make sure you keep that in order. But it should be fun to watch. The one thing that I'm wanting to see the most, Teddy, give me that Rockets-Warriors game. Is my double vision ready for James Harden? Should be fun to watch, Teddy. Yeah, look, if you're a sports fan or a sports better, it's a pretty darn good weekend. And you better enjoy it. <laughs> Because there aren't that many like this between now and September. But you talked about it. You're saying you're looking forward to the Warriors Rockets. I probably am too. I'm looking forward to the Derby. The Derby is always fun. The most exciting two minutes in sports. But it doesn't matter. NHL, MLB, NBA, Kentucky Derby. We got you covered right here on That Betting Show. Sportsbookreview.com. Yep, enjoy your weekend because on Monday, both Teddy and myself are going to start previewing some NFL football teams out there. So keep that in mind. Thank you for joining in and watching that betting show for May 3rd, 2019. Your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. He's Teddy Sabransky. Want to get, once again, give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour, Rights IVP. We'll be back Monday. It's football season. Tune in and find out. Have a good weekend, folks.